All right, what is up? Welcome back to another video. This is gonna be a repair video. We have here one of my uh, least favorite cameras to work on, just generally speaking. Not necessarily this model, but just point and shoots in general. If I am gonna work on one though, I'd prefer it to be one of these because they're easy to get into and easy to get working again. That being said, I've kind of had rotten luck with the Canon A35 F whatever, yeah, AF35M as of late. Basically, my buddy got one and he's like, hey, do you think you can get it working again? Like one of the contacts is a little bit uh, goofed up. And I was like, yeah, for sure, dude. So I take a look at it and it was firing, kind of, but the shutter wasn't opening. So basically the, the camera would just produce blank photos. So I was like, okay, sweet. So I took that one and took it apart, tried to clean it. Lo and behold, the corrosion from the battery compartment. Oh my God, <laughs> classic. This takes AA batteries in here, and these there's two things that will happen with these cameras, inevitably. The contacts in here will be fried from battery corrosion or the back door latch here will be snapped in half to the point where it won't work. So we're just gonna remove the door so it doesn't keep flapping around and also that strap kind of gets in the way. So anyway, he found this one and he's like, hey, here you go for parts. So what I'm gonna do hopefully is take the parts from here and put it into, basically try to Frankenstein a camera together. And I don't really know how that's gonna shake out. First, I'm gonna put some batteries in here, just see if this one even works, cause I've not even tested it. I mean, hey, honestly, I think this makes my job a lot easier. I think I might as well just put a new back on this. Make sure the flash works. This is what the capacitor looks like. It sits in the bottom of the camera here. So it does take a little while to charge. When it does charge, it should uh, light that up. But if it's not charging sometimes, there we go. Well, 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 I gotta say, I am pleasantly shocked and surprised by this revelation. This makes my job and life significantly easier. I'm gonna clean it though, cause it's kind of disgusting. So I guess we'll do that and kind of chat a little bit. So yeah, the point and shoot thing, I'm kind of, I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of in the same spot I was at originally with them and that I, you know, it depends on the model. I think of all of the point and shoots though, this is probably one of the better ones. Any of like the fixed lenses, this one's a 2.8 so it's pretty fast. Like this is a worthwhile one to get into. They're relatively easy to work on. Any kind of experienced technician will know what to do. I think the problem is with this and just about any of the other ones is that some of the parts are really about as cheap as can be and just to kind of cut corners, make the make the overall product more affordable for a general audience, because that's kind of who these were targeted towards. The unfortunate reality to that is that uh, that does not age well. Plastic, AA, battery, corrosion, all of that stuff leads to a lot of breakdowns over time. So that's kind of why it's, you know, it's, it is something to be aware of with these and that's kind of why I don't really recommend them too much because there's no telling what will happen, what could go wrong with them. So yeah, my, my assessment is like stuff with prime lenses usually is best. I think prime lenses, fewer moving parts, there's less Articulation in the lens especially means that there's a higher likelihood of sharper focus. Um, that's just my my preference there. 
That being said, these can go for exorbitant prices. And I've seen this before a few years ago. There was somebody I knew kind of closely, not like super well, but well enough. And this person was putting stuff online, like selling stuff on Etsy and whatnot, selling it as fully refurbished, all this stuff. It was just a bunch of point and shoots. I make these videos on Instagram, like going to Goodwill, grabbing, like these, you know, $5, $10 point and shoots at the time, because that was kind of a thing, and then turn around and sell them for, you know, 300, 400 bucks sometimes. Like, it was ridiculous. And at first I was like, oh, that's neat. Like, the message I was just like, hey, how do you, how do you repair these? Like, what's your what's your pro? Anyway, it turns out uh, nothing was done to the nothing was done to him. He maybe maybe like a roll was shot through these point and shoots, uh, but more than likely it was just kind of like it fired. All right, works perfectly fine. And I don't know. To each their own. I just think that that's kind of uh, shiny business practices, especially considering like. I don't know. I buy cameras on the cheap and then I sell them. But a lot of, I feel like, work goes into them. And then if you, I mean, have actually look at the profit margin uh, based upon what I bought versus how much I make off of what I sell, it's really not that great. Like, it's not, unless it's done at large scale, it's really not that great of a business model. But that's fine. I, you know, do it for the love of the game, but. So I'm gonna remove this uh, back panel here. I think I can, yeah. The hard thing with these is that they're kind of all uh, clamshelled together to a degree. So the front and the back and the top all kind of like latch in. So you kind of have to remove, if you want to remove any of it, you kind of have to remove all of it or kind of loosen something up here. I want to keep the top on because if this comes off, it just kind of becomes a bit of a nightmare. But from here, we can actually get a better glimpse into, nope, you can't, never mind. But basically, this is the rear operation here. You have the LED, which, or the, the light here, which is for the flash indication, your flag here for the film advance. You have the motor drive system here, and I believe, autofocus cell sits right there. Now what we're gonna do is re-sync the... Is that just broken? I've never seen that before. What a shocking thing that would be. Yeah, that's actually like just legitimately broken. That is shocking to me. I don't think I've ever seen that where it is broken. Kind of another reason why I hate working on these. They just develop these issues that make no goddamn sense. So that's that's special. Okay, so we have a revelation, which probably would have been good to know before I tried gluing a piece in, but the pegs that hold this in place almost appears like it's a screw, but I think it's just a little peg situation. So upon removing that, we're able to get this whole situation out of here. I think where the disconnect is, because you want it to be connected right at that point. Obviously this uh, has been broken off, which is why it wasn't functional. We're just gonna put this in here. That looks much cleaner. The one that I pulled this out of was really, really stiff, but I think this will work just a bit better. So I have it in here so it lines up. Now I did mess up a little bit because I made a cut here because I was thinking I might have to kind of leverage it out of here. And upon doing that, it's when I popped up the little uh, tab things. So fucking lessons learned. I'll see if this piece works. If not, I have many of these because fortunately this is not really a piece that I've seen fail all too often. Uh, and I have many of these cameras because they're broken, they usually get included in those like four parts of repair lots that I buy often because you can never have too much garbage. And uh, yeah, that's, 
that's pretty much why. And then use my tweezer here, do that. And then from there, it's moving properly. So we'll take the little pegs, get them lined up in their hole, press that down. That looks like it's gonna work just beautifully, which I'd love to see that. Honestly, this was not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. I thought, like I said, I was gonna have to scavenge something together to make something that would pass a resemblance as a working Canon camera, but I think this is just gonna do the trick nicely. I almost forgot that this had to go on. Like I said, it clips in. So make sure that all clips in properly. And I kind of had them laid out in the order in which I took them out. That is important because some of these screws have different depths to them. And you wanna make sure that you don't accidentally screw the wrong screw into the wrong place or blah, 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 whatever. So that's very vital. I've never like broken this camera because of that, but I definitely have messed things up because I misplaced a screw, so. This is one of the more, like I said, repairable um, cameras, like point and shoot cameras. So I don't mind working on them, but I kind of take the same mentality to this as I do to lenses. I feel like I can work on them. I just prefer not to because there's just too many things that can go wrong. And despite best efforts, I can't like put a stamp of like, yeah, hundred percent, this is going to be a working thing. I just don't have the mental capacity for that kind of activity. So now we're at this stage and this is very vital. Okay. If you have one of these, I beg you, please don't just slam the sh back shut. What you should do, because these are very delicate, very fragile plastic hinges, just press down on this, let it sit in there and then put it back up. That way it's not gonna come flying off. The back's not gonna break apart or whatever. I think it takes a, a few more minutes, seconds or whatever to do that. But I think ultimately you won't break your camera, which I think is the most important part. So if you have a Canon 35 AF 35M or whatever, that is something I really do recommend you do to close it up because otherwise that latch is gonna break and then it's just gonna be a mess. I'm trying to work on reattaching a latch, but not working with the best materials. So I might revisit that at some point if I ever get any of the other um, A35, F, AF 35Ms or whatever. I don't know why I can never say the name right, but if I ever get another one of these working and all I need is the latch, I might work, look into you know, replacing or trying to reuse it. But so like from here, what you do is just press it on that. But for now, that is, that is it. That's a very, very, very minimal repair for a Canon AF 35M. If you can avoid working on these, I would really recommend doing it. If you have one of these that's in good condition, make sure to do what I did with the back. Just be extra, extra gentle because these are old and plastic. So they are very prone to breaking and failure. And if you want it to work, that is something that you should do. So thank you for watching. Appreciate it as always. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, like it, comment down below, and I will catch you on the next one.